and welcome to Chuck Pushback Live, Heart of a Champion. Uh, I want to welcome my co-host, Bella Di Silvestro, and uh, my very good friend and guest, uh, Chris Doris, mental toughness coach. Chris, how's your day going? It's, you know what? This is the best damn day of my life right here, buddy. Because you're on the show. Is that right? Is that That's accurate? One of them. <laughs> that is the reason for the moment. That is... I, have a, I have a ritual that I uh, begin every day with. And that is what? And it is making the decision that this is the best damn day of my life. I don't wait to see how stuff goes. Well, th that's where I, I start the day in that attitude. And I got to tell you, I've been doing that for about a year and a half. Yeah. Right? And it works. I think that I I'm going to recommend it, okay, for everybody. Well, that was my we're last good. question of the show, so we kind of covered everything. So we're good. Right, so we're good? <laughs> no. Uh, but th <laughs> but Thank, uh, Thank our sponsors. Yeah, I yeah. Like take care of the business fast. Uh, for those of you who don't know Chris uh, Doris, he is the mental toughness coach and he has his own podcast, and he has interviewed, uh, I don't know how many, but numerous people from Navy SEALs to professional golfers uh, and, and right on down the line. So I want to talk to Chris about that, but uh, the, the, the questions I have for Chris to start the show out, uh, just so you people know, Chris is from Philadelphia, correct, Chris? South Jersey, okay. but I, you know, okay. like I can walk so, to Philly. For and and as you Collins. know, and as you know, it's no longer called Wensylvania because Carson Wentz went to the Colts, so that's not happening anymore. But you're a big Phillies Flyers fan, but you live in Arizona. What what is the culture difference between Philadelphia and Arizona? Warmer is <laughs> temperature wise. Uh, yeah, right. People wise, <laughs> not too, the warm. Warmer the city of... <laughs> I'm sorry. What's that, Bella? I said people there are warmer too. Uh, look, Phillies, you know, it's, I've been out here for 27 years. That's just one year more than half my life, which is a little weird because I came out here for grad school. But I still, like, I, like Chuck the other day when we talked, I said, yeah, I was just home because I came home for the Eagles game against Tampa Bay three weeks ago. I said, yeah, I just came home. This isn't home. I'm not home. I'm just hanging out in the desert for a minute. <laughs> Will you live? Will you live in the moment? So that, that's all good. It doesn't matter where you're at. I know you control your environment no matter where that environment is, correct? That is correct. Okay. And I got I got, I got a show and tell thing because I saw a certain jersey behind Bella. Give it to I me. What is something. it? Come on. What is that? Oh, <laughs> no way. Get out. Game used. I just lost the show to Bella. Stop it. <laughs> How about that, huh? Is that any good? Oh, you're kidding me. That would go good with that jersey behind you. I'm telling you. Welcome to the Chuck Bushbeck that. Sports Show, and uh, we're with Chris Stars. <gasps> <Awesome. laughs> Come on, we were just talking about I know, I know, I know, I love it, I love it. I love, Bella, I love that you're such a big hockey person. I think it's fantastic. I'm a big hockey girl, big oh, hockey girl. God. That's very impressive. Yeah. We only have the best on here, Chris, as you know that. We all, you know, that's how we roll here, so. You the man. I know. So, uh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get back to Chris Stars, and you're making it very difficult to do that. <laughs> um, so, so Chris was up, and, and we had um, we had shared um, uh, a glass of wine, to, you know, to be nice about it. Uh, last time you were up, and we had some great conversations. And you have been doing this for quite some time now. Can you go into a little bit of why Chris Stars does this, and? And, and how did you start? And it was something that you felt that was uh, something that was inside of you, or do you think any influ outside influence uh, came into your life to, to, to make you feel that this is what I want to do? All right, so let me, let me, let me back up, and then, I'll, and then I'll get into that. So I'm going to back up, first of all, to just give a little bit of context to what it is that I do. Because I think a lot of people don't know what the heck, uh, you know, what is a mental toughness coach? What, what's that? What does that mean? You know, <laughs> get your head out of your clavin. That that's kind of talk, right? <laughs> Basically, that's it. That's the bottom line. Right? Oh my God, we're never gonna. Get through this. <laughs> we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Go ahead, Chris. I'm we'll sorry. Get this. Yeah, we'll get this. we're not. Gonna, we have victims get through things. We are creators. <laughs> we are gonna get. We are gonna get stuff. We are crave for this. So, All right. uh, yeah, you know, I was. I spent summers at the Jersey Shore down in Sea Isle City. And, um, and then my neighbors had a real big influence on me, but before I, before I tell that story, that short story, I want to say really what I do as a mental toughness trainer is I, I do what we didn't learn. I teach people what we should have learned in grade school, like, like 
maybe the most important class that would have been there and in high school and in college and at every level of education, which is how mental mastery, which is how to use your mind, mm -hmm. how to, how to train your mind, just like you train your body, right? To train your mind so that the result of that training is that you only use your mind in ways that serve you, that maximize the probability of you having what you want, being who you want, getting what you want, doing what you want, creating excellence with less mm -hmm. effort, suffering, like eliminating unnecessary settling, struggling and suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, like becoming a damn thought wire, emotional master. We should learn this stuff. And, but right, so we didn't. Most of us didn't. Right. 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 So I'm into like, I'm into people experiencing life opportunistically. I'm into people being really happy. I'm into people kicking ass. Mm -hmm. I'm into people creating miracles because I'm convinced that we are designed to do that. So that's like, you know, a broad stroke of what, what CD does as a mental coach. How did it start? <sighs> My neighbors, Dan and Maine Kane. Who? Their names <laughs> were Dan and Maine, Maine Kane. Kane. Okay, got it. They had one child. They had one daughter. Guess what they named her? <sighs> Pain? Um... Candy. Candy. Oh. Yes. I didn't, I didn't, went right started. over my head. Candy Go ahead. Cane. Thank you, Bella. Cane cane. <laughs> cane cane. Yeah, candy cane. So these people were just so full of love. Now my, now, my dad died when I was nine. He was a severe alcoholic. He was a happy man, but he killed himself fast with booze. Yeah. And then we got kind of poor. And, and our house was characterized by scarcity, fear, like a lot of fear, like darkness. Like it was like scary. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a jovial or celebratory home. By any stretch. What, what, so it wasn't just a pain. physical pain. It was an emotional darkness. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. It didn't, there was no safety. Yeah. It wasn't joy filled. Right. I got you. Now my neighbors, the Canes, oh, they were joy filled. <laughs> my bedroom faced their house. They're, they always had all summer long. They're hosting somebody else, the coffees, the hecklers you know, uh, Candy <laughs> and her, her husband, Chick. And, oh, no. you know, they, they just would always host all summer long. They had like a whole rotation of guests. And this is their deal. They, I'd spend a whole day at the beach and then they'd be on their front porch for happy hour, having hors d'oeuvres and cocktail every single day of summer. And then they would go inside for dinner and then they would retire to the back patio and laugh their asses off all night long. And my bedroom faced their house. So I'm sitting in my room, like reading a damn Hardy Boys book or something. And you know how contagious laughter is, right? Yeah. It, it's like the mirror neurons. You know, you just start laughing. You don't even know what anybody's saying, but you just start laughing and it gets you. The, the, the joy fills you. You know, they got, they brought the vibes. Vibe up. I like it. That's actually a great shirt. I didn't really think about that when I wore this. That wasn't premeditated, but it is actually quite, quite perfect. Or was it? They had the highest vibes ever, the Canes. Now, here's the deal. Everybody, I mean, it doesn't take any kind of intellect or assessment to discover that that's better. <laughs> right? So I got curious as a kid early on. Like, I don't know that I ever articulated it, Chuck, like in this like language in my head, yeah. that this was the awareness that I had. If that's available, and this is available, that's better. Why don't we choose that? Yeah. So that's what I dedicated my whole life to. That's how it started, like just saying, choose and joy. But then it evolved, man, it evolved. Because then as I studied like human, you know, emotions mm -hmm. and the ability to choose peace, to choose joy, to choose enthusiasm, I noticed something else that comes with those high grade states. You know what it is? What is Peak it? Peak performance. Absolutely, I agree with that. That assery. Isn't that amazing who, 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 who? that those two are inextricably connected? The better I feel, the better I am, but only at everything and only always. When you grew up, who was in your family? Did you have siblings? Just your mom? Yeah, or? I got two older sisters, Patty and Maureen, uh, and my mom, Rosie. Okay. But it was hard for all, for all of us. Oh, yeah, for all of us. Yeah, because my dad made a lot of money. You know, he had his own accounting firm right. in Camden. You know, he worked for Campbell Soup. He was the city controller of Camden. You know, we did pretty good. So you had things, right. but the, the emotion of the house was dark, but you had things. Because my mom didn't, really, she didn't, she didn't finish school. Like she never worked, you know? Right. So we went from like pretty well off to like suddenly not good financially. And it became a very stressful right. home. Right. There was a lot of like literally paranoia, like fear. How are we going to survive? We can't spend money. 
you know, and, uh, and there was no, there was really no celebration anymore. There wasn't any fun. There was no fun. Right. There was no fun. But, but and I look, you know, and my neighbors and all there is is fun. Well, obviously that family was very important to you, the canes and candy and, and such. Yeah. My, my, but you didn't intellectually get there at that age. When, when, when did you kind of say, that, you know what, screw this, I'm doing this. And, and, and what was your thirst for knowledge? Where, where did that come from? Is it just from practical experience? Uh, it was, you know, no, it was, it's not even a thirst for knowledge necessarily. It's a thirst for knowledge specifically about how people can use their lives and the ability to choose our states, to choose our states. Like that story is so critical to my whole life because I, I'm just watching these people live and I'm watching us live and going, this is terrible. And that's a better damn option. So I got curious. So that's why I studied psychology, right? Uh, and then I became a social worker in Atlantic City and, started, and then I became a licensed therapist. But then, you know what happened? I broke my leg bad one night playing hoops down the shore in Sea Isle right. one night, November. Oh my God. It was, wow. It was November. To, it's almost November 20th, 1991. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know they call that up. senile city, right? You know that, right? No. Easy. Relax yeah, okay, sorry. All right, just throw that in there. Go ahead. You got a broken. You got a broken yeah. leg. You're yeah. traveling yeah, twenty miles. My legs real bad. Compound fracture is bad. It was bad. Yeah. Bone came out and all that was nastiness. And, and I was like, "That's enough hoops." So I, because I play college hoops, and I was just playing pickup games down, you know, after work, and uh, I just hung up the Chuck Taylors. You know, I started playing golf. And that's when I realized how psychological, I was going to just say how psycho. <laughs> I might just go with that. I turned into a psycho. I turned it on, a, I got really addicted to golf, love the sport, still do. Yeah. And I noticed how psychological it was, is, and how psychotic I was being on the golf course. And I figured, you know what? Here's my ticket. I'm going to marry my passion for psychology and the human spirit and human potential right. and emotional mastery. With sports, baby, specifically with golf, and that's, that's how it I moved started. out here in Arizona because of golf heaven. So it was golf. Golf was the one that kind of pulled you in, and then you kind of took off. And 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 next thing you know, it is was there a step in between your what you call your title, mental toughness coach, and your podcast that you're doing and interviewing people? Where what happened in between there? Was 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 just golf the moment that you made a decision, or was there something else? No, that was it. That seriously was it. Like I was on the golf course one day, Wildwood Golf and Country Club. I was playing by myself. It was like fault. I was like this time of year. Nobody around. Yeah. And I as there was one hole, I think it's 13. It's a dog like left. And I just cut the corner. I just bombed, 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 nutted a drive perfect. And I had a gap wedge in on a hole that I normally have like five irons. So I'm all pumped. And I chili dipped it like the divot was bigger than my screen. There's mud on my face. <laughs> I'm so pissed. I just slammed the club into the ground, which is wet, and it broke. So I'm standing there holding a broken shaft, looking like a jack wagon, <laughs> thinking to myself, man, this is messed up. You're messed up. You're a whack job. There could be a career in this. <laughs> there could be a career in this. Because <laughs> I ain't the only one. <laughs> you know? But but that, but let me tell you another cool story. This is a cool story for people. Yeah. This is about, like, the power of pursuing, like, really trusting your greatest damn desires. Can I tell you this story? I, that's all I want to hear is trusting your damn yeah. desires. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm okay, a big man, proponent this, of this. This, and is, I, this, this is why you're wrong, because you have the heart of a champion, and, and you did certain things to get you where you needed to get to, and I want to okay. hear about them because the people that are listening to this, whether live or on tape, th this is to not educate somebody, but to feel what our guests are saying and what got them there, and then maybe – they have the courage to take what you say, what the show's about, and, and improve their own life. That's very beautiful, man. It's good for you on creating for you for creating this. That's pretty spectacular, man. So props. Boom. Well, my producer Joe Lee is is top shelf, man. I got to give. Way him to go, props. Joe. You, we can't go, we can't do it without the IT gigs. guys, man. The IT guys I, run I the show. You. Okay, I hear that. I hear. I would. I can't even spell podcast. <laughs> I wouldn't I'd be able to run. Well, I right, get to your get to spot. your story though. Get to your story because I want to hear right, that. All right. <laughs> so um, it's time. Let me give the preface to the story: is that I really do believe that in, inherent within our greatest desires 
are um, the mechanics for success, for all success, mm -hmm. right? Inherent within our passions are the mechanics for their own fulfillment. So uh, I, I have, I will acknowledge before I start the story that I have had the phenomenal blessing for my entire life of having excellent mentors that always encouraged me to trust my truth and follow my bliss. Mm -hmm. So I'll say that. So, this, so doing that wasn't my idea. I just did it. And if you ask me what's the best decision you ever made, that's it. It's, it's trusting that my, my passion would work out. Now, not just work out, it would create, I would thrive, in it, which I'm thriving. So it's, I'm in my graduate school uh, master's degree program. It's, it's the second year. It's the end of the deal. I gotta, we got, everybody does an internship, okay, in the second year. I'm in a counseling program because I wanted to study psychology. Even though I wanted to become a sports psychologist, I wanted to study the mind, not like, you know, exercise psychology and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, or sec exercise science and physiology. So um, I'm talking outside after class one day, I'm hanging with a classmate, Teresa Kowalski. We're in the parking lot uh, at Arizona State University. And I'm kind of whiny. I'm like, I don't want to do another counseling internship. Like I just did that, you know, down at, at Ventnor Atlantic City. I already did the counseling thing. Everybody's going to work for mental health agencies. I'm like, I already did that. I want to do it. And then Teresa, so what Teresa does in her infinite wisdom, she asked me two questions that have not only shaped my life, these two questions have shaped the way I coach every single person I've ever coached in my life. So the first question, the brilliant question she asked is, hey, CD, are you done whining? Can I ask you a question? I go, yeah, yeah. She goes, so what would perfect look like? Now, I couldn't even hear that. I couldn't even hear the question. Why? I heard the Why? noise of her voice. Why? I wasn't hearing her say what, like, seriously, what's perfect? Like, CD will be perfect. I'm stuck in, like, oh, well, you mean, like, in an unrealistic world? And she's like, uh, well, I did say perfect. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, like, you know, in a perfect world, she's like, that's what I said. I said, all right, all right, all right. So, like, <laughs> ideally, I would do my internship with the men's golf team here at ASU. And as soon as I said, I still said, I finished that off with a, but what the hell would they want with like a non-contributing zero yeah. like me who has none applied practice and blah, blah, blah. She goes, all right, all right, all right. And then she asked me the second brilliant question. She said, why don't you ask? And I said, oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> you don't get how it works in D1. This is the best. Phil Mickelson just left. Right. This is the best golf team on the planet Earth. They don't even have to recruit. They got people come, like Paul Casey's and John Rahm's coming from all corners of the planet, you know, on their own. You don't have, I mean, what are they? I got no uh, practice. I've got no experience. And after all that, she just says, she just stood there. She just held. Mm-hmm. And stayed with and just left me with the question. And I, I said it. to her after all that, I, th I said to her, you know what? Okay, if I'm going to be honest with you, the reason that I have wouldn't have asked up to this point is because I wasn't even letting myself entertain that yeah. as a possibility. I wouldn't have thought to ask because I was so stuck inside my little box. I wasn't even thinking about what would perfect look like. So then, then I said, but now if I don't ask, it's cause I'm a coward. I ain't gonna be a coward. So I go, so I go to my supervisor in the, in the master's program. I say, doc, is this, would this even count? Like if I pulled that off somehow, yeah. would that even like count? He goes, of course it would count, but I can't supervise you. Cause I don't know sports psych. I don't know golf. Either. You got to go find somebody with a you know, licensed psychologist who did applied sports like golfers. You got to go find, and you got to get the coach to say yes, for God's sake. Yeah. I'm sorry. So you're saying I got a chance. So I go meet with the coach. I was so nervous. I was so scared. I was walking down the hall. How, all how the old were you? Like, how old were you at this point? 24, 24 years 25, old. 24 ish. Yeah. What did you, did you, did, did you, do you think that, these were fears that you had resonating inside of you and, and it took this woman to get you pissed off. What, what was, what created the scenario for you to move forward from that moment with her? The awareness that I had a desire that was stuffed beneath 
crappy beliefs of what's not available to me. Like the belief that well, my greatest desire is not available to me. Mm-hmm. That was the belief. I didn't know I had it, but she got it out of me. She got my greatest desire out. Like what would perfect look like, man? I said, perfect would be with a golf team, right? So then I'm like, now I got to ask. I got to ask. I can't go forward and wonder now after that I had that clarity. I can't always, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life going, I wonder how that would have worked out. So I asked. So I got the meeting with the coach and it was, I was so scared, but he's like straight, straight away. He's like, this sounds like a great idea. I'm like, did, did, wait, did you hear the part where I don't like have any experience? <laughs> and he said, we'll, we'll start you with the freshman. And if it goes good, you can work with the whole team. I'm like, All right, okay, <laughs> let me get out before I ruin it. So then I, I, so then I go down the other side of the campus to the clinical psych department. And I talked to the one uh, instructor that I knew there. He was a very famous researcher, sports psychologist, Dr. Dan Landers. And I said to him, yo, man, here's the deal. And he, and he said to me, CD, <laughs> of course, the guy across the hall right there, his the guy's name is Dr. Darwin Linder. Go get what he, he's a golfer. He's done this stuff before. I'm sure he'd love it. So I get a point with that guy. The guy goes, it's going to be great. What, what do you think would have happened? It if, happened. If, what, yeah, but what, what, what do you think would have happened if he said no? Did, did that conversation with that woman say, I'm going to try again? Because a lot of people in life, get rejected okay and and yeah they have a dream but the energy to get behind the dream isn't quite there or it's not at the level that you need it to be so did you did you think you got lucky or was you think something came up in you and said i'm i'm push this is what i want and i'm not turning back what 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 went through your head i don't think i don't believe in luck mm-hmm. Okay, I believe that we create our destinies, we create our lives. Right. Uh, I can only hypothesize right now or postulate if um, either the coach or let's just say the coach said no. I probably would ask him again. <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. Yeah, I probably would ask him again, or maybe I would have went to the football coach because I ended up working with them too, with Dirk Cutter. Dirk Cutter was the coach then. And he and the, and, the, and the quarterbacks coach was Mark Mark Helfrich, who coached you know Oregon right right Oregon he was a quarterback and these guys they, I work with that but anyway so let, let me I'm almost done with the story yeah go ahead okay so um so I, I created the internship it had never happened before no one had ever done an internship with the men's golf team at Arizona State University which kind of blows my mind but it did it wasn't never it just no one ever did it so I'm the first one to ever do that so the internship goes phenomenally well. The coach ends up hiring me for the next 10 years. <laughs> All these guys on this team end up going pro, and I'm watching them every weekend now on TV. There is no one. I'm not, listen, I, what I'm about to say is not bragging. Right. It is informing that this kind of stuff is possible for us all every day. Right. What happened was I, probably took the fastest track from uh from no one Mm -hmm. from like a nobody all right in the world of golf to working inside the ropes at the majors with pga tour players than anybody in history and the reason is because of Teresa and her two questions she got it out of me thank god Teresa, if you watch this you know i thank you a million times i'll never stop you got it out of me. What's perfect look like? Why don't you just go ask? Sometimes it can be that easy. Yeah. But Belly, I know for us talking before Chris came on, you had certain questions uh, that you... No, I do. And I absolutely love this because I'm a big believer that there's no such thing as coincidence. So for me, when I'm hearing that story, Teresa was obviously the catalyst of what you needed at that time to basically flip everything around and flat out just called you out and was like what's your excuse all they can say to you is no and if they say no then what are you going to do about that you know I think that every single person that we meet every conversation that we have has significance to point us into whatever direction we're supposed to go into because obviously talking back on everything that you know you've built your business on of mental mastery it's all about manifestation for ourselves and what we believe we're capable of so if we keep ourselves in that you know mental prison of what we think is normal or where we have to keep ourselves restricted then how are you ever supposed to achieve anything with that so i loved that story let me just say that i loved that um 
for me, when, you know, Chuck and I were talking before you jumped on, uh, we mentioned you worked with Navy SEALs before you worked with athletes. So how does that kind of apply to different types of people? Because obviously training a Navy SEAL is going to be, in my mind, I would think a little bit different than working with an athlete when you're kind of defining their skill sets. Actually, fundamentally, it is identical. Really? Yes. The conversations that we have will have different contexts because the people are in different, you know, realms. Mm -hmm. You know, most 95%, 99% really at this point of my work is working with executives and salespeople. I'll explain how that occurred. That was not part of my plan. Mm -hmm. It's better than what my plan was. The reality I'm living now makes my original dream look like scrub material. Makes your perfect look like nothing. Baby food, <laughs> which is why just keep following, keep following, keep following, keep moving towards, keep moving towards, keep moving towards, and miracles are guaranteed to happen. They can't not just keep moving towards. It's a mantra, move towards and activate the mechanics. So, you know, the work that I do with anyone, whether it's, you know, whether it's a golfer or whether it's a CEO of a company, you know, or um, uh, a football player, you know, like an offensive lineman, it's the same. And it's about learning how to control what you're filling your mind with. Because what you, you want to do an exercise on this? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let, let's, you know, we're cutting edge here. So whatever we need to do to get the intel out there, that's what we're about. Uh, All right. Uh, baby. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Okay. Everybody, please do this. This is a game changer. For a lot of people, this exercise it only take like three, four minutes, but it, this is all right. We got it. We got it. All right. Think of something that happened in your life that was unpleasant. Doesn't have to be, you know, traumatic, but something unpleasant. And we're just going to do this for a couple minutes. For not even, not even like one minute. Yeah. I want you to now. We use funky language, but it's very on purpose. For, for the next few moments, choose to fill your mind with that particular thought content of an event that happened recently or distantly, doesn't matter, that you interpret as unpleasant. And as you're doing that, notice the emotions that arise within you as a consequence of that choice of particular thought content, that unpleasant event, and label those moods feelings or states label them because i'm going to ask you for them later on all right and notice if you're having any physiological responses as you do that i am there you I go mean, all right we'll yeah. get back to that I'm now we're going to change channels good go now let's switch it up okay this is faster than changing channels on direct tv by far now think of something that happened in your life that was hysterical either or lovely if you can't think of something funny there's just something beautiful something spectacular an event that was just amazingly awesome and for the next few moments, choose to fill your mind with that particular quality of thought content. And as you're doing it, notice the completely distinct and unique emotions that arise in you as a consequence of that choice of thought content and label them. Notice any changes in physiology? Yep. Mm. Flyers just scored six or one. So heads up on that. All right. So <laughs> I got intel, baby. All right. So I get it. I get without, it. I'm never going to ask. I never ask anybody for the events. Don't need to know. I don't right. need to know the events. Yeah. What I do need to know are what are with the first memory, the unpleasant experience. You notice the language that I was using. Yeah choose to fill your mind with the thought content right? right and what are the emotions that arise as a consequence of your choice of thought content you see what i'm trying to push here right is the instantaneous and inextricable relationship between your thoughts and your emotions so what were the moods that you thought your way into with the first memory yeah bell you fear. want to go first fear anger anguish um disappointment right on Good. You were able to do that. That's good. Did either of you have any? Well, you, Chuck, you said, yeah. You said you were. Ha you did, in fact, have a physiological response to the first um, thought. Yeah, the, the the one big word would be heartbreak for me. 
Mm. Just, mm. just something out of my control and I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. Hopelessness, helplessness, heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. And you felt it. I did. I did. Yeah. My ears okay. got tingly. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Oh, I yeah. Can- Feel. That's the first, Bella. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that with people. Seriously, like I, it was almost like I could feel. You know, when you get so angry that you almost get tingles. Mm. Oh wow! Like, wow. Up from my. Well, see, see, check this out. See, isn't that fascinating? Here we are. We're just having a, a kick it, hang out. Yeah. This is yep. a pretty chill moment. It yeah. went not right whole, up my ears. Like I yeah. feel like my ears are hot right now. You created that out of nothing. Yeah. How how long did it take, Bella? Two seconds. There you go. How about <laughs> yeah. that? Now. Second thought, the second memory, the second event, right? What were the emotions that you fought your way into? Chuck, are you taking this one first or me? Um, I'll take it. Uh, at first, um, I, I would say the, the end result was laughing my ass off. Uh, I would <laughs> say in the beginning was shock, but it, it turned to a, a, a fun night. It, it was kind of mischievous activity all right um, oh, i'm so curious i'm gonna have to ask i know yeah. we're gonna have to talk we about gotta, that. we're gonna have to get it's that. a funny story <laughs> it's it's really when, we okay. have other, when, it, right. when you get me uh, on your show i'll, I'll talk about it I that. all right I that. so yeah. yeah so i i found yeah. it very comical and, and just could not stop laughing when it happened oh yeah i had my eyes closed as i was doing this i didn't notice if your facial expression changed but probably did uh yeah so how long did it take to switch uh, from the time it happened to the time I went hysterical, probably about f- four or five seconds till I thought of the Isn't initial that, and then went to. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what this exercise is illustrating, and you can never unknow this, is that we all possess the ability to profoundly alter our states in a moment's time. That's a that's a hell, that's a superpower. Okay, here's my Think qu- about here, here. we're conditioned to wait, wait for things in the outer world to change before we change our states. Stop waiting, create the state, don't wait. What state? I don't care, whatever you want. Okay, my, my question to you, and this is a biggie, because every person on the planet goes through this. What do you tell the person who's stuck? They don't know what they're doing. They're afraid to do it. They know somewhere inside them they have a gift, and I believe that with my whole heart. Everyone has a certain mm. gift to give away, and people can't, or, or, or not that they refuse mm. to find it, but it's lost. What, how, do you, how do you work with individuals to get the best out of them? Well, I, like I said, Teresa totally affected the way that I coach people now, so I always start with what's perfect look like. Do you, how th- what's like the, what's big crazy and guess what i never you know what i do i don't believe their first answers you think they're lying always on their first answers as they're not escape? lying well okay if you want to be it's dramatic limited. about it they're they're they're, they're okay you want to hear an example of it? yeah here we are uh back in the day when i was coaching a lot of junior athletes kid comes in he's a swimmer he's a high school swimmer right for like xavier or not whatever some really cool high school here and, uh, and I asked him, so what, hey bro, uh, let's get started. But what, what is our mission? Like, what are we, you know, why are you here? What are we working on? What are we creating for you? And he said, uh, I'd like to make it to States. I'm like, cool. All right, let's get after it. Uh, well, hold on before we actually start. Um, like, do you care how you like do in States or do you just want to get there? And I don't, I don't care what you want. I don't care what you want. I just want you to have what you want. Mm-hmm. So I ain't pushing anybody to like, you know, make your, your desires grandiose. I don't care, whatever you want. Let's just get clear on it and have you have it. So he said, uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't mind like winning states. I'm like, okay, so you want to win states. That's our gig. And he goes, yeah. I'm like, all right, good. Right, what year are you? And he goes, junior. I'm like, are you applying to colleges? He goes, yeah. I'm like, do you want to swim in college? He goes, that, that'd be cool. Like, okay, so you, all right, so you want to win states? Do you want, you want to, and you just want to swim? Where would you love to go? To, if you could go to college anywhere, where would it be? Go Stanford? I'm like, <laughs> word. Okay, so you see where we're going with this? Yeah, boom. You know, what, what ended up happening was, you know, he got clean with his truth, which is, you know, he, he wanted to be an Olympian. But, but it took like 20 minutes. That's what I'm saying. That how, how do you get that? How do you know when someone's being truthful? In what they would do you see the light in their face go up i mean what what is it chris that you look for when you work with people and you know we're on our way when we're over the hump to a certain degree how do you where how do you know that 
because you can hear it, you feel it. Right. Because I know I have that memory, right, that I explained to you when I was standing in the park a lot after class with Teresa Kowalski. And I said, when I finally got to, yeah, it would be the, the men's, go- man, that would be, wow. Yeah. Men's golf team. Man, that would be, whew, that would be good. So that's, that's convincing. So, you know, you know, when you, because when somebody goes, I want to win states. Yeah. It's no passion. None. But then he started getting passionate. He was like, oh, man, I'll tell you, swimming at Stanford, that'd be pretty sweet. Scholarship? Yeah, man. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So the whole, the, whole, the whole vibe changed. You feel the vibe, Chuck. That's the answer is you feel the vibe. Right. What, do, do you think you keep the vibe when you get an answer or, or something doesn't work the first, second time? The people that you work with, are they, are they instructed to move through it and, and not give a crap about what other people think and follow your dream? Is that, is that the mentality that you give your individuals? 100%, man, 100%. Yes lives in the land of no. I want to get to know as fast as possible and keep on going and keep on going. I, I, I use the analogy of flimsy little doors. Like, is it, you see these doors behind me? That, that's a closet. This is a bedroom that was converted into my home office. I could run through those. They're so – they're not stopping anything. Yeah. Right. It's but you know what happens? You know what happens in the mind as soon as a great, like an adult, not a child's mind, but after we're educated, well educated about our limitations, you know what happens instantaneously after the arising, the occurrence of a grand idea. You know what happens instantly in the brains of adults? All the reasons why it won't happen. And and and, and I and I want to get to that point, okay? So I, I want to go down the rabbit hole a little bit, if you don't mind. And you know me well enough now that we don't get anywhere unless we go down the rabbit hole. And I know you like to go there, too. Buckle up. All right. Yeah, buckle up, bunny. I'm driving the bus. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So you, you know a little bit about my story about, you know, yeah. uh, my heart and, and, yeah. uh, and how what I had to do to save it. And when doctors had told me you need a new heart and I said, no, I'm not doing it that way. You kind of know a little bit the story. And, yeah, if I, and if I listened to them and didn't listen to my heart, my passion, right. I would not right. be having this interview probably with you right now. And, and another instant in football. What, where does the mind come in, not just thinking about your passion and what you want to do, but where do you go in the quietness of your mind? And what does that produce ahead of, ahead of the inspired action that you take? Mm, okay yeah, right okay baby let's get it all right get after it will you yeah. so i have uh like a metaphorical toolbox of mental toughness tools and there it's full okay There's a whole lot of tools in there we got shooters mentality we got imagery we got emotional mastery we got game face we got the convincing argument there's a jillion of them, jillion pre-game post-game all that so you know what is the most valuable tool in the toolbox that's why you're making the big money, man. Tell me. Transcendental meditation. TM. Mm. TM, baby. Or the gap. In the That's gap. A for it. The gap. The gap is a nickname for it. Because it refers to the gap or the space that can exist between thoughts if you let it with practice. Do, do, is, 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 look at all every human every peak performance. You examine the state. Yeah. Okay. You look at the brain. Just ask people what was it like when you were crushing it, when you're in the zone. And everybody describes it the same way. It was, it was, it was easy. It felt like it was kind of creepy, easy. Uh, it was pleasant. There was time distortion. Um, you know, I felt light. I felt like the, like the, the instrument, the, if it was a guitar, like solo, you was playing through me or like you're a golfer. It's like, I, I just couldn't screw up. I was like, I, I wish it was always like that, you know? And, and the brain is quiet. And they ask people, well, what were you thinking? They're like, I wasn't. I, I probably wasn't. I was letting. You you were letting. You, well, you, you use the term God, your universe, whatever. You allowing that presence to guide you in the direction when you when you go quiet, and you allow the thoughts to come into your mind because you're not thinking the thoughts unless you're thinking from another uh, energy source. Whether whether you know whether you're here all together now or somewhere else in time. And you're opening your mind to what's possible. Do you think that has to happen? Uh, is is it does it is it helpful to do that to change physical matter? Or I know you can do it 
physical matter, but it can take a long time. So what do you use as the mental coach to, to get their minds to, to know that you, you can, yeah, use your physical abilities, but when the mind's made up, it's a game changer. To get in alignment. So this meditation is called, again, transcendental meditation. And the reason that it's called that is because you're transcending the activity of mind. You're transcending thought, mm -hmm. right? And if you study the brain activity, when people are in that like trance or that meditative state, I think it's theta waves, I think, uh, we're vibing with like the vibe of the cosmos. Right. All right. So when we're in that, then that's when we're connected. And that's why everything seems just perfect. And that's why people go, that was godlike. That was godlike. I want more of that. Because I, my belief is this, that that's the true us. Mm. The, the rest of the, it, which is the most of our lives, is the remembering that we don't really have to struggle too much. So, so we're really talking about the memory of the past, the vision of the future or the current moment, and the biology, and you, and you know this, the biology of belief. We've heard it numerous times, right? Epigenetics. Here, here baby. Mr. You got the book? Mr. Bruce. Bruce Lipton, Uncle biology Bruce. of belief. Uncle Bruce Lipton. Uncle Bruce. Uh, I'm getting him on the podcast soon. Are you really? I want, I want to, yep. I want to get on there. Make sure you invite Chuck Pushback live. We and Bella will come too. We'll have a, we'll have a deep, great though. time. That guy gets deep. Well, we, we, well, he, 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 he actually uh, helped my life because when I understood what epigenetics was about, that it wasn't my DNA. Yeah. My DNA was, was um, performing in, in a way that I didn't want it to, but I realized that I could change it and no one, we're not taught that. We're not talking. We're not, not taught, taught that. We're not taught that we can change our okay. DNA. We're taught that right. you are who you are, and and I know for firsthand you can change because if I didn't if I didn't do this, I wouldn't be here. Like I said, talking to you. So right. how how do we how do we fix this? Like other than Chris Doris going out and, and and getting an individual or a class or CEOs whatever, how do we fix this? Are we are we dealing with a higher? Um, vibration now in the world given the last two years is, is something good going to come out of this if, if we wanted to i have i have a belief uh, this is just a hypo well delete that i don't like that word just this is my hypothesis and i started uh this uh examining this hypothesis uh, in, like in like 1991 like right around when i broke my leg and it's that uh humans are evolving in a beautiful way okay right with respect to consciousness you think we're moving forward 100 uh, percent, absolutely and, and even and we are you know we focus on all that's wrong there's some value to that because <laughs> we're constantly solving problems which is cool but we're also uh, feeding them by giving so much attention mm -hmm. to a lot of it and, and, or the way that we're paying attention to the problems like i want to look at the problems of the world like math problems and enthusiastically solve them from i there. love that i love, I love that I love yeah. that. Yeah, the less of a problem I have with the problem, the more capable I am of resolving the problem. So you, so you attract what you think about. Is bottom line is if you see a negative activity, and you're giving your emotional mindset to that activity. You're going to attract that same thing that you're looking at. But if you can look at it a different way, you change what's going on around you because you've changed. You know, there, there is a. I just actually saw one of my pod, or blog posts came out on this like today. I think actually there's. A machine called an electro or a magnetoencephalograph, a magnetoencephalograph. Easy like for you to say. Big old school hair dryer, right? It's a bit like a big egg over your head, and you know what it does? It measures the vibrations of your thoughts. So, um, uh, a great mentor of mine, whose name is Dr. Allison Arnold, Doc Alley, she taught me that we are all always either polluting or purifying the environment with our thoughts. Deepak Chopra taught me that uh, thoughts, uh, the energetics of thoughts don't travel. The energetics of thought is instantaneously accessible across all space time. And they do experiments on that. Th that's the piece of Einstein's uh, um, relativity theory that was troubling him all the way up to his death the piece that was missing and it was that nothing travels faster than the speed, speed of light. light right the problem is that there's an assumption that everything travels information doesn't travel it's instantaneously accessible across space-time 
Bella, it's what you were talking about with synchronicity. You yeah. call coincidence, right? Synchronicity. Yeah. So they do like they have experiments. You want to hear a funny one? This is funny. It's a little weird, but it's funny. Uh, they get they get a guy um, they get a guy's sperm cells and they put them in a lab, right, in a petri dish, and keep them alive in L.A. They send this guy over to Amsterdam, across the planet, and they send him to a strip club, <laughs> and they get him a dance. And the moment in time that he gets aroused, his cells in, across the planet in LA in the lab start going. No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's like, that's just one of like, that's a funny one, but there's like all kinds of experiments that they do with the, it's called non-local non correlations or the instantaneous accessibility of information, synchronicity. Carl Jung coined that phrase, mm -hmm. synchronicity. Right, Sting stole it. <laughs> it's, everything is connected. Everything is instantaneously and inextricably connected. So now we're going to, we are down the hole, man. And that yeah. is what the zone is, is when humans are, we're designed for miracles. So when we're in crush mode, we are aligned with spirit. We are inspired in alignment with spirit. Mm -hmm. That's our true selves. Chris, I, I love that crush mode. That is one of my favorite phrases that you came out with. I'm going to make a t-shirt about that. But what, right. but, but what, you, right what you just talked about is basically string theory and we're all connected okay. our brain is the same look as the universe and that's what they, yep. that's what they found out so if that if that's if that's the case then our future could look bright or we could destroy whatever's in front of us be, because of how we think and how we feel about any situation correct i believe that we are expressions of divine grace in human form we ain't gonna mess this up yep yeah, I, I, I was asked this question, and, and I, and I kind of said that in three-dimensional reality, you know, it's, it, it can be hard because we've all had experiences that we didn't understand at the time. We didn't have the intel. We didn't have the info, right? And I always, I always say when I go out and talk that, you know what, you're in a master's course. People that are here on this planet in this three-dimensional reality – you're taking a master's course, and your job is to master your mind. And if you can master your mind, mm. the, 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 you know, it, it's your oyster, right? Would you, would, Amen. Right? But, That's the deal. Yeah, and, but it's hard. I mean, it is. When you don't know. When, it's, it, it's hard when you don't know, when but you it don't, ain't hard when you do know. When that, it ain't exactly. hard at all. It ain't hard at all. That, here's, the, here's, here's some. Here's something. All right? Start stopping complaining. This is what I want to get to. I want to hear how Chris Tars is going to leave our audience tonight. What do we? What does? What does? What do I, Bella? Everyone need to know from Chris Tars tonight. Well, one, remember the exercise that we did. Please don't ever forget that we all possess the ability to profoundly alter our states in a moment's time. Yeah. Let's practice that. Don't wait for, create the state, don't wait. Don't wait for things in the outer world to change before you change your state. Choose higher grade states. Choose to think your way into higher grade states all day long by changing the content. So here's the practice, pay attention. I say the most mentally tough, happiest, successful people, those are all intertwined, choose to live in a perpetual state of self-inquiry. What that means is we're always asking ourselves questions like, you know, how am I feeling right now? Is it, is it working for me? Could it use a little love? Like what mood or states am I thinking my way into this moment? Do I want to bump it up? Start. Here's the easiest way to do the practice. You know what? Scientists say, how often do you think we complain on average as humans? Take a guess. Oh my God. How many thoughts do you have a day? I forget. I think it's like 80,000. 80,000 80, so probably. Got, how, how often do we complain? And, and I'll give you a hint. The vast majority, like 99% of our complaints happen silently in our minds. So what, 20,000? Oh, I think it's higher. No? You well, it's once every, I mean, well, you can do the math. It's once every 11 seconds. Oh, my God. I'm not doing the math, Chris. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not, does somebody do that? It's a lot, though. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, a, lot. it's a, lot. a lot. Okay. Yeah. So every one of those complaints, basically complaint by definition is you having a problem with reality. So you're struggling against with reality, struggling against reality, which is a fight you will lose, but only all the time. So catch yourself in complaint, right? And then flip it, upgrade that, right? To what? To like, what? What do you, what do you upgrade well, it to? Well, like this. Here, all right. So you, uh, mantras, tons of mantras, like ain't bad, just is. That's neutralizer. 
That's like the antacid. Ain't bad, just is. That's from Shakespeare. It, it's uh, it's a Jersey form of it. It's no, I Jersey get it. It's good. South Jersey, like a Philly <laughs> yeah, translation from Hamlet, which uh, he said, nothing good or bad happens until you think it's so. So ain't bad, just is. Okay. Or the problem is the gift, if I'll have it be. I walk down, I go into my kitchen the other day, my uh, water all over the floor. My, my refrigerator had broken, right? And I just filled the freezer with a whole bunch of amazing steaks and they're all done. They're all gone. Everything in the freezer done, right? And I water all over the floor. My unpremeditated response, and I'm a mental coach and I've been practicing this for about 30 years, was a whole string of F-bombs. <laughs> Okay. I can see it. I can see it, but I no. but I can see you uh, yeah, catching you yourself. Can, you can hear it too. <laughs> yeah. But I can see you. Go, I can see you saying, "Wait a minute. There, there's a this happened. There's a reason why." And well, I, what, and well, I well, here's what it did. So I started dropping f bombs and like ripping on home warranty because I what I didn't tell you is the refrigerator broke earlier in the week and was fixed. They didn't replace it. My home warranty. Then it broke four days later again. So now I'm like, ah. and and that lasted, honest to God, for about ten seconds. That's it. I'm very, very proud of that. Because back in the day, that would have lasted 10 days. And what's, what, what changed that for you? Just the knowledge practice, and the wisdom? Practice, practice, practice. Get the reps in. So what I did, I did the practice. Right. So right there, stand in my kitchen. I go, ain't bad, just is. That's where I started. And then I upgraded. I said, actually, I'm going to create from this. And, and look at me right now. What am I doing? I'm on a podcast creating from the broken fridge. I got you. I'm using it to serve people. That is my creation. Every set of circumstances can be created from if viewed masterfully. Get the reps in. Mental training is no different than physical training fundamentally because you just need the reps. Mm -hmm. Get in the reps. As many reps as you can. The, the difference between mental training and physical training is you can't overtrain mentally. You ain't going to get hurt. You ain't even going to get exhausted. You're just going to get exhilarated. Mm -hmm. So any reps. So I'm paraphrasing anything that you experience in life that you initially consider a bad thing flip it change the way you think about it and the and the item will change or the circumstance will change your life well that's will change. like our boy wayne dyer you change the way you look at things yeah. the things you look at change right right mm -hmm. yeah so and i mean this this isn't like like kumbaya crap <laughs> i've heard kumbaya in a okay. long time Go ahead, I got you. <laughs> this is I practical. never heard that analogy. Go ahead, I'm listening. Yeah. Now this is like I don't like off. I don't like fluff. That's okay. I don't like food. food. I got I you. Ain't in that. I'm in the legit. Yeah. I'm in the practical business. Right. You know, stuff that works that has us be amazing. That I believe we are designed to be like the miracles we are designed to be. Yeah. Right. We spend so much of our lives in unnecessary angst, frustration, disappointment, all our low grade states. And we don't, and that's not why we're amazing. No person in the history of humans has ever described peak performance as crappy, as unpleasant, as a struggle, right? So let's practice catching myself when I'm feeling uncool. Not that there's anything, by the way, I want to say there's nothing inappropriate remotely about having uh, low grade states. We just do it too much. Yeah. Way too much. Like way, way. Way, way. Okay. Way, way. So catch yourself and upgrade, catch an upgrade, catch an upgrade and get the reps in all day long. You know, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like back in the day, that refrigerator would have had me spinning for days. Okay. So first of all, I, 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 I appreciate you being on the show and sharing your gift. And that's why you're here because you are a, a person who has a heart of a champion when it comes to expressing your gift and that's what this is about it could be the 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 show that was before your before you uh talking about baseball and and the legacy of lou gehrig and that's that a guy gift. knows a lot of stuff it, it, and it was emotional and it, it was moving yeah. stuff like it but you you're bringing your gift to the table and that's why we all have this heart of a champion inside of us and you just displayed that today uh, to the audience and I, I want to thank you for that because that is mm. greatly appreciated man well I, I hear that and I'm taking that so thank you so much take that Chuck, to the bank for, and thanks for, I, I, just, I just banked it man I just made that deposit this, right this was the I greatest moment of the year for you are you kidding me <laughs> yeah. Come on. you too Bella anything else for Mr. Doris or oh, Chris what, okay Bella you, go ahead one more thing or are you good 
thank you. Okay. I am a habitual overthinker. So I have a lot of tools and tricks that I got to take with me into my day. There you go. Right on. Hey, you know what would be cool is my greatest creation in my life. I'm not kidding. It's called the daily dose. Hmm. Okay. It's actually an email. This is the book version of the first 365 of them. They're little nuggets. Well, oh, like really little nuggets of mental toughness gold they come in your mailbox every morning at 6 a.m wherever you are in the world right mental t- it's called daily dose mental toughness tips in 30 seconds or less i've spent so much time well, I, that i love spending retaking these concepts like the ones we've just discussed and reducing them down to like neutron star density nuggets that are consumable in a half a minute hmm. they come to your mailbox at around 6 a.m wherever you are in the world so if you go to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S, you get all the goodies. You got it. And, Free, and they, I'll solicit, I don't spam. And they can get to you from that site with, with anything yeah, else, Yeah, ChristopherDoris.com. Right? Okay, okay. And it's D-O-R-R-I-S is my last name. Chris, uh, Omaha steaks are on the way. Just want to let you know. I had a baby. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God! Great having oh, you man. on. Great seeing you again. Oh, and you for too. my and nice seeing you, Bella. For Chris Doris <laughs> and uh, my co-host, you guys Bella. make a great uh, duo. I'm never. Gonna, I'm never together. going to get off cool. the show. What you guys just want to kind of talk <laughs> while I'm, I'm ending the show? That's fine. And my my, my producer here. I'll tell you what. This guy Joe Lee is is yeah. in, incredible. Br- that makes this stuff happen. I, I'm so lucky to have him, and I, I wanted to give him a shout out, even though he's not on camera right now. I won't embarrass him, but uh, I, I'm so thankful for him and 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 you coming on, and Bella, and our executive uh, directors, uh, CJ Deroma and uh, Jim Sims. Uh, that's going to be it for the show, and I do have to read something. Um, this is from my producer. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and consider supporting us on the Patreon at the link. Uh, in the description and thanks again for watching chuck bushbeck live heart of a champion chris stars you're awesome thank you appreciate you see you guys